It was a warm winter day in Washington, D.C. And since it was warm, and since it was winter, I decided to go for a walk. I walked along the Potomac River, and as I walked, I saw lots of rocks. While there were many rocks to see, the rocks I found most interesting were the white rocks, surrounded by the gray rocks. Gray rocks, white rocks, gray rocks, white rocks. And as I was walking and thinking, I was lost in my thoughts. Gray rocks, white rocks, white rocks, gray rocks, white rocks, gray rocks, gray rocks, white rocks. And as I kept walking and as I kept thinking, all of a sudden, I tripped. And the whole world started spinning and 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 spinning. And eventually, I woke up. And when I woke up, I found myself walking on the shore of a dark, gravelly, sandy beach in the middle of southern Chile. Chile is a very long and narrow country in South America. It borders the Pacific Ocean on one side and shares with Argentina a tall mountain range border on the other. Since I was in Chile, and since I wasn't sure how I got there, I decided to do some exploring. I drove up a windy road near the top of the Andes Mountains. And above the mountains, I saw a great big bird, a condor, soaring overhead. I got out of the car, and I walked along the rocks. And I saw cracks in the rocks, and I wondered how the cracks were formed. Then I saw a waterfall, and I wondered why were plants growing on rocks by the waterfall, but not on rocks farther away from the waterfall. In the river below the waterfall, I saw some kayakers paddling in the rapids. I saw ducks standing on the rocks by the rapids, flying over the rapids. Swimming in the rapids. I walked away from the river and towards the forest. And I heard an interesting sound. And when I got a closer look, I realized that sound was coming from birds with green feathers. With the help of a really good book and a really good app, I learned that these birds were different kinds of parakeets that live all over the Andes Mountains in Chile and Argentina. There was so much to see in Chile, so every day I went for a walk. And some days I even went for a paddle. As I went exploring, I noticed everywhere there were lots of rocks. Some of the rocks were very smooth, Other rocks had lots of holes in them. So I wondered where the rocks were made. I was thinking about the rocks and feeling overwhelmed with so many things to see. And as I was lost in my thoughts, I almost didn't notice that off in the distance, there was also things looking down at me. Off in the distance, I noticed snow on top of a mountain and I realized that the rivers were being formed by the melting snow. But what about the rocks? I knew I had seen rocks like this somewhere before. Was it possible that all of these dark rocks came from the big mountain? These rocks looked a lot like igneous rocks. They had different colors and lots of little holes. I looked carefully back up the mountain and realized that the snowy mountain wasn't a regular mountain. While mountains come in many shapes and sizes, this mountain was almost perfectly symmetrical. 
both sides slanted down from the top at almost the exact same angle. Both sides were at the same angle. This mountain was a volcano! And while this volcano wasn't erupting when we saw it, the igneous rocks all around us gave us clues that the volcano must have erupted before. I spent the next several days exploring Chile. All over Chile, wherever we explored, we saw volcano after volcano after volcano and volcano together after volcano after volcano after volcano. And even when the fog and the clouds made it too difficult to see the volcanoes, the igneous rocks gave us clues that the volcanoes may have erupted recently or may have erupted long, long ago. Where did we see all these igneous rocks? Well, it seemed like the igneous rocks were everywhere. Igneous rocks were along almost every road. I saw igneous rocks in fields. I saw igneous rocks along all of the rivers. I saw igneous rocks that actually had created a great big dam that stopped a river from flowing and turned it into a lake. I saw igneous rocks in national parks. I even saw igneous rocks along the beaches of lakes and rivers. In some places, I saw sand that looked like it was made of crushed igneous rocks. And in some places, I saw igneous rocks that were so small, they actually looked more like igneous sand. While exploring, learning about the rocks, Learning about the volcanoes and learning how the land has changed because of the rocks was really, really cool. I knew that if I really wanted to get some more details, I had to do a little bit of research. Every day, after I was done exploring in the field, I spent time looking closely at the rocks and doing some research with my microscope, with my magnifying glass, with the internet, and with some really nice books. I learned that I had seen at least five or six or maybe even seven different kinds of igneous rocks. The ones with holes and the ones that were really smooth all came from lava that was cooling as it came out of the volcano. Scientists call them extrusive rocks because they exited the earth before they were formed. These extrusive rocks included scoria the rough bumpy rocks with holes. Another extrusive igneous rock was the smooth rocks called basalt. While usually the basalt was flat on the ground, I did see some smaller pieces and I even saw some places where it formed very interesting structures. These ones are called columns. The third extrusive rock I saw was called pumice. Pumice was rough, light colored, and very lightweight. Pumice is so light that it floats on top of the water. Scoria, basalt, and pumice all come from cooling lava and all form above the ground. While the extrusive igneous rocks that form from cooling lava above the ground were the ones I thought I saw most often, it turned out there were many more igneous rocks to find in Chile. I looked along the streams and even under the water in the streams, near the volcanoes and sometimes farther than land where I could actually see a volcano. In these places, I found many rocks with crystals. Crystals come in many different shapes, many different sizes, and many different colors. Sometimes crystals are shiny and sometimes they're not. While holes are formed from water and air bubbles as liquid rock is cooling and hardening quickly, crystals form as liquid rock cools and hardens slowly. Holes are formed by extrusive rocks. 
and crystals are formed by intrusive rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed inside the earth. Liquid magma turns solid before it leaves the earth. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed inside the earth. Of the intrusive igneous rocks that I saw in Chile, the one with the smallest crystals was called diabase. Then there was a rock that was mostly white with black spots and slightly larger crystals. This one is called grano diorite. Gabbro was quite similar. It was mostly dark with white spots and slightly larger crystals than the granodiorite. These intrusive rocks with crystals reminded me of rocks I'd seen in some of the different mountain areas all over the United States. Granite has the largest and most defined crystal of all of these intrusive rocks that were formed by magma under the Earth's surface. Granite has the biggest crystals, diabase has the smallest crystals, and in between was the really small white granodiorite and the darker and slightly larger gabbro. While exploring the crystals, I wondered why do some rocks have really small crystals, other rocks have larger crystals, and some rocks have no crystals at all? What causes crystals to be large, small, or not there at all? I learned that the crystals are formed when magma, that's the name for lava that's still inside the earth, cools slowly. Why might hot liquid rock cool more slowly inside the earth? Well, the earth acts like a coat. Since the magma is so hot, when it cools outside or near the surface of the earth, it's like you or I going outside wearing no coat at all. Since we get cold very quickly, there's not much we can do before we have to go back inside. When rocks cool very quickly, they don't have time to make crystals. When the magma cools deeper inside the earth, it's like going outside on a cold day wearing a coat. And the deeper inside magma cools, it's like wearing one coat or two coats or three coats or four coats or many, many coats, so it gets cooler much more slowly. When I wear many layers of clothing, my body cools slowly, giving me more time to play or more time to make interesting formations with my body. When magma or liquid rock cools slowly, underneath the surface of the earth, it has more time to form different kinds of crystals. The slower the magma cools, the more kinds of crystals or the more larger crystals it can form. Granite cools slowly and forms larger crystals. Diabase cools quickly and forms tiny crystals. Intrusive igneous rocks cool slowly and often have crystals. The slower they cool, the larger crystals they can form. Crystals, holes, floating rocks, volcanoes, mountains, lava fields and rivers. There was so much to explore in southern Chile, and as I explored, I learned that much of the land in southern Chile is made of igneous rocks. We saw igneous rocks near the volcanoes, by the rivers, in the fields, and even on the beaches. Some of the rocks were so big you could walk on them. Some were so small, it was more like igneous sand. Some had plants growing around them and even all over them. Some had nothing growing anywhere near them. We learned that there's different kinds of igneous rocks with different characteristics. The extrusive rocks were very rough with holes or dark and very smooth. The intrusive rocks took time to cool and often had crystals. Some rocks had really small crystals. Other rocks had larger crystals. Together, 
all of these rocks help tell the story of how the land in Chile has changed over many years and how the land in Chile is changing today. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed our exploration of the igneous rocks from the beach, from the rivers, and all around the land of the many volcanoes of southern Chile. See you next time on another adventure exploring nature and learning about science. Bye-bye.